commission under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, I've been looking forward to this. Um, tonight we have uh, some student recognition of our EHS field hockey team, the 2023 state champions. Uh, Dr. Campbell, would you like to uh, formally introduce? Yeah, we weren't quite sure. Good evening. Um, good evening, team. It's great to see all of you. We weren't quite sure how we would do the introductions and really celebrate you as state champs. And originally I thought we might have like a goal here and I would be goalkeeper and we'd let you take shots. But then when I saw you in action, like I thought that would be horrible. Um, so we are, um, again, we as, um, as the superintendent on behalf of administration, the school board, and really just the entire East Penn community, we wanted to um, invite you and appropriately recognize you for being the 2023 state champs, which is just really a phenomenal accomplishment. And so in just a moment, I'm gonna ask your coach to come up um, and introduce you and recognize you. But I wanted to first point out um, that the young, the young ladies that we're gonna recognize this evening are not only tremendous athletes, they're also um, amazing students at Emmaus High School. You do great things within the community, and I know that you're deeply committed to your sport and to each other and really excelling on and off the field. And that shows, and you do so many things every day that make us really proud of you, including but not limited to being state champs. Um, and so again, to appropriately introduce you, I also wanted to um, recognize your coach. Um, I'm, in just a moment, I'm going to ask Coach Butch Staven to come up, but because I knew she would be here this evening, we talk a lot about your coach um, at our board meetings, and I think you recognize that the you know, the, the state and the national, there's a lot of state and national recognition of her too. So um, Coach Butch Staven has been here supporting our high school team for 48 seasons. Um, her career stats are that she has one, a team with 1,067 wins, 85 losses, 35 ties, 41 PIAA district titles, 15 state championships, one of which was earned by all of you, with 38 appearances at the state playoff games. Um, you know that just recently Coach Butch Staven reached the milestone of 1,000 wins, and she was also rec recently inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame for the winningest coach in U.S. field hockey history. And so, um, again, Coach Butch Staven, I invo invite her to come up. And I also recognize, I want to say that, again, we're really here to highlight our students, but I believe so strongly that I know that um, you all excel because of the great coach that you have in Coach Butch Staven. I also will um, highlight and show our appreciation for your entire coach coaching staff. I know that you have many coaches who make you a great team. Um, and I also wanted to take a moment just very briefly to, sh to express our appreciation for your families as well. I can appreciate there's a tremendous commitment um, and support for all of you and the team and that um, we feel that from your, your families as well and appreciate those that were able to join us this evening. So without anything without anything further, I invite, invite Coach Butt Staven to come up um, and recognize the team. Good evening, and thank you very much for inviting our state championship group here tonight. Um, we appreciate you recognizing the girls for all their hard work and their dedication, um, not only as uh, to the field hockey team, but also to their academics at the high school. So I'm very proud of all their accomplishments. Uh, they work very hard on and off the field, and we have great support from the, from the parents and our booster club and, of course, from administration. So we always really appreciate that and, and your backing. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce uh, Allison Haas, one of our associate coaches, Coach Haas. <clears throat> we also have accommodations from Representative McKen McKenzie. We do. We've received um, proclamations for all of you from several of our local state representatives, Rep Representative um, Ryan McKenzie, Milou McKenzie, and Pete Schweier. So 
we have those as well. So when I'll have the girls, is that all right? If they come Absolutely, forward, please do. we'll give you a proclamation here. Um, our senior team captain, Emma Carey. <laughs> senior player, Adriana Alvardo. <laughs> Senior Autumn Held. Uh, seniors, the Kabaki Twins, I don't believe they're here tonight. Uh, we have Sage Polarski. Very good. Senior Jordan Pohl. So stiff, relax. <laughs> <laughs> Senior Sarah Schaefer. And Senior Malia Weber, who was recognized by the Morning Call in Lehigh Valley Live as Player of the Year. Our junior class, Autumn Kernickle. Sorry, Abby, I didn't see you sitting there. Senior Abby <laughs> Romano. Yeah. Junior Emmy Horner. <laughs> Sophomore class, Sarah Palazzo. <laughs> Sophomore Addison Povolitis. Sophomore, Morgan Orobano. <laughs> Sophomore, Adeline Trunka Miller. <laughs> Sophomore, Corey Campbell. <laughs> Sophomore, Caitlin Carter. Sophomore, Charlize Solano. <laughs> Sophomore, Miss Pohl. <laughs> Violet. Sophomore, Iko Price. Freshman, Maddie Lennig. Freshman, Gracie Huffer. And freshman, Emily Romano. Want to turn around and Yay. thank the school board. Thank you. Maybe three rows. Two rows. Thank you very much for the recognition.
All right, well, th thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Up. Hey, you guys can stay if you want. <laughs> well, congratulations again, and uh, Okay. All right. Well, that was that was great. Um, item C on meeting opening. Uh, the EH, EHS Student uh, Government Association report is actually going to be at next next meeting later this month. Uh, so we'll move on. Uh, there are no requests to address the board. Uh, so first item of business is the approval of minutes for the December eleventh, twenty twenty three regular board meeting. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Okay, seeing none, uh, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Ms. Bowman? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Falegi? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Klotz? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, next is the district update, Dr. Campbell. Following our theme of recognizing our student athletes, um, I wanted to also offer our congratulations to several Emmaus High School students and teams, including Vivian Pinochi Reichsman and Dallin Allport, who were just recently named to the overall EPC Scholar Athletes among all EPC schools. Um, and again, that, uh, that recognition came about as a result of Similar to what we just talked about with our field hockey players, um, their outstanding accomplishments both in their sports, both happen to play um, girls or, and boys soccer, and as well as their overall accomplishments in the classroom and in the community. I'd also like to recognize the Emmaus High School Emmaus High School girls cross country team who was recently named the team of the year by the morning call. And along the theme of recognizing the great work of our sports teams, Recently are the Emmaus High School boys freshman basketball team um, sponsored their 11th annual Coaches versus Cancer Tournament and raised almost $5,000 to support the American Cancer Society. Similarly, over the winter break, our girls basketball program, which was a collaborative effort between our middle and high school program, held their second annual shoot-a-thon, which raised about $7,000 to support the Angel Networks across the district. So again, um, I think really just speaks volumes about the, the accomplishments of our students, our student athletes. This past weekend, Mrs. Gariello and I had the honor of attending the Eagle Scout Court of Honor for five Emmaus High School students. And so likely you are aware that the ranking of Eagle Scout is the highest rank that you can earn in scouting. And um, it's a tremendous accomplishment. And for us to have five members of our senior class who have achieved that honor is, is pretty remarkable. So I wanted to, again, um, thank the local scouting organization and their leadership for inviting us and including us as part of that celebration. And most importantly, recognize and congratulate again Aiden Erickel, Ryan Bennett, Ben Fletcher, Charlie Peters, and Greg Smith for earning the rank of Eagle Scout. Some reminders that we have, the East Penn School District is still hiring crossing guards for Lincoln and Jefferson Elementary School. Anyone who's in the community who might be interested, please visit our human resources page for information. If you want to talk more about the position, you can even call the district administration office and we're happy to talk to you more about what that position entails. I'd also like to share that um, in preparation for our annual East Penn Mental Health Symposium, which we hold annually in the spring, we're seeking to make the event as meaningful as possible. And so on our district website right now, we have a survey that we're asking any community member to complete. And it's a very brief survey that really just asks topics that are most important to families so that we can design a symposium that ultimately meets the needs of the community. Please watch for more information regarding um, a really important start to the middle to high school transition process, specifically annually. We host an eighth grade family welcome night. 
Tentatively, that is planned for tomorrow evening from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm just going to say the weather's looking a little bit tricky right now. And so um, stay tuned as to whether that event remains tomorrow or if it's changed. We'll make a decision certainly earlier in the day, but I almost just really wanted to put the event on people's minds. Um, it's a really valuable and important one in, at which we bring students and families in to begin to make that transition to high school, talk about the course selection process process and things like that. And the final piece that I have is um, really one of recognition and appreciation for our nine board members who are here. January across the state of Pennsylvania is School Board Appreciation Month. And so on behalf of our administration and the community, I just want to thank and appreciate the vital work that you all do every single day. Um, to continue to offer great programs, academic programs, extracurricular programs, activities, and really just the culture that we're looking to build in the district that's committed to supporting all students. So thank you um, to all of our nine board members as well. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Dr. Campbell. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Well, I would just like to reiterate one of the points uh, that Dr. Campbell mentioned about the Mental Health Symposium. Uh, I think it's an important resource that the district assembles for our community. Uh, so I do hope that uh, the community takes an interest in uh, create or suggesting topics by which to build the program. And then when we do have it, uh, you know, participate as, you, as you're interested. Okay, if there are no questions, we'll move on to the next item, which is personnel. Um, I have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, I believe, uh, Dr. Campbell, you have some comments? <clears throat> or is that after? I'll, I'll reserve my comments until you, the board takes action, if that's oh, okay. Okay, that's yep. fine. Thanks. Okay, are there any comments or questions from the board? Okay, well, seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mr. Falegi? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Klotz? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Aye. Ms. Bowman? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, Dr. Campbell? Thank you. As we, as we um, like to do in the organization, anytime we have retirements, um, we do our very best to recognize their outstanding contributions and dedication to the, the district. And certainly tonight, the board approved three, accepted, I should say, three retirements. Um, one of which takes effect in January, the others will be at the end of the school year. Mrs. Michelle Yesenovsky is a staff assistant at Emmaus High School. She's been with us for almost 13 years. Um, again, doing, doing many different responsibilities at the high school supporting our students. In addition, Danny Fox is a guidance counselor currently at West Coastville Elementary. Um, upon retirement, he has 34 years of um, in public education, half of which, 17 of which, have been here in the East Penn School District. Um, again, I believe all of those at West Coastville Elementary. And finally, um, the board also accepted the retirement of Brian Harkness, who's a chemistry teacher at Emmaus High School. Um, he has 31 years of service in the district, again, 16 of which have been here at Emmaus High School. He's one of those individuals who's incredibly student-centered, um, really seeks to build um, powerful, lasting relationships with kids, and certainly um, will be greatly missed. Um, and so we wish all of our, our, our we wish our three retirees um, continued happiness and success in their next ventures. In addition, um, as part of the personnel item, I just wanted to take an opportunity to publicly introduce Carrie Oaken, who's with us this evening. You likely recall, um, for those board members that were here, in the fall, we hired um, Mrs. Oaken as our student activities director. Mm -hmm. She came to us. Um, Carrie was originally a, a, a member of our East Penn team. Um, she left to take on some new leadership responsibilities in the Quakertown School District, and we were really fortunate that she was um, came back to take on the student activities director position. She began with us in the fall, um, and again, just um, with, with her transition, 
uh, would love for her to come up. And as is customary in East Penn, um, we'd like her to just, you know, come around and shake hands for each of the board members. She's been here. She hit the ground running. Um, you can appreciate she does many of our middle school activities as well as clubs and activities throughout the district. And so she's been super busy and appreciative that she's here this evening to come meet the board. Carrie, come on up. <laughs> Hello again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for all that. Uh, next item of business is business operations. If there are no objections, I'd like to get a motion to take items A through D together. So moved. Second. Okay, are there any questions or comments from the board? I, I, uh, Ms. Klotz. Hi. Oh. Hi, Mr. Saul. I have some questions. Okay. Okay. Um, so I was looking through the report, and on the general fund, I calculated around 1.2 million paid to charter schools this month. Is that correct? Is that typical? Um, I don't know if that's correct because I, I obviously haven't had a chance to look and add those up for this month. Um, okay. We, what I will say is I'm not sure if it's typical. I'd have to go back and look. We, okay. were, we fell behind in our payments due to a vacancy in the business office. Okay. And so there were some makeup payments that we were making for, for a couple of months. So that could be um, slightly higher than you would ordinarily see based on the timing of payments that we made. Okay. Do you know what the average amount is? I don't off the top of my head. I'm okay. sorry. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, this expenditure, is it during the school year only? The, for charter schools? Yes, for charter schools. Um, so the, the way that the Pennsylvania Department of Education has set up the, the um, funding process is we pay um, 12 months out of the year. It's for their school year, and it's reconciled at the end of the year. So if somebody leaves in the middle of the year, they're just cut off at the end of that month, but then it's reconciled on actual days of attendance at that charter school. Okay, thank you. And um, what is the difference in the non-public versus charter schools? Or I don't know if that's a question for you or for someone else. There's a line, I can find it in a bit, but there is a line for, um, it's the school name, I believe, and it says non-public, and then there are also charter schools listed. Could be a private, e a private placement. It's just private, okay. Yes. Um, the reason I seem a little confused is because we, we don't make any type of subsidy payment to private schools. So it's, uh -huh. it, as Dr. Campbell just whispered over to me, it could be for um, some sort of placement um, okay. for a student that w that's different from like a mm -hmm. private school. You know, obviously we make tuition payments to charter schools, but not private schools. Okay. And... Um, just one, two more questions. How many students are enrolled in charter schools now? You know? um, I don't have I don't that think information. That's right. Again, I don't have that information off the top of my head. I apologize. Okay. I don't actually. <laughs> I, that makes sense that you wouldn't have it like right on. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So the next question, I don't know who could answer this one. Um, do you guys know if the number of students in charter schools is increasing or decreasing generally? We can certainly compile that data for several years and provide the board with the information. Okay. Um, again, not having a single, not having the, the anticipated total for this year to compare to previous years in terms of our cyber charter. I don't want to misquote something. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Are there other questions from the board? Bless you. Bless you. Okay. Um, seeing none, 
Uh, Ms. Allen, may please call the roll. Ms. Ford. Yes. Mr. Jankowski. Aye. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Klotz. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Dr. Whitney. Aye. Ms. Bowman. Aye. Mr. Falegi. Aye. Dr. Levinson. Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Our next item on the agenda is curriculum approval of educational conferences. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Okay, seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mr. Jankowski. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Klotz. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Dr. Whitney. Aye. Ms. Bowman. Aye. Mr. Falegi. Aye. Ms. Ford. Aye. Dr. Levinson. Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Our next item is item seven, policy. We have a first reading for multiple policies. Uh, would the administration like to uh, speak to any feedback that was received? Good evening. Um, we did not receive any feedback or questions on policy, but I will just give a general overview like we typically do during first reading. Um, I'll just take a pause in between each of the, the policies just to see if there's any feedback or questions. Um, so uh, as you're aware, we have five policies that are uh, under review. Um, I'll start with the first one, 006 meetings. Um, the revisions to this policy appear under the voting section of the policy to more accurately reflect what is already stated in school code. Specifically, there have been changes to specific actions and how many, how many votes are needed, specific approvals. Um, so that's uh, 006 meetings. Any questions or comments? I have a question or yes. comment. Yeah, Mr. Jankowski. Um, and I'm not, so this, this is on, on page, um, it's page three of the policy on the top. For Robert's Rules of Order, just, just to note that we, Roberts are, is now on the 12th edition from 2020. I'm not sure what the specific updates were um, and whether there would be any concerns with us following the most recent edition of the rules. I think we can make an adjustment there to the, the most current uh, edition. We'll change some language. I don't know if Robert's changing the <laughs> conduct or <laughs> governance of meetings. Uh, I would imagine not, but I think we understand your yeah. point. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. Thank you for that comment. Any more? Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to 216.1, uh, supplemental discipline records. This is a new policy. Um, it, it lays out the specific information that is required to be shared with schools when a juvenile who is enrolled in a school entity meets certain requirements that uh, through the court system. And so we've made some updates with our own um, practices here with registration and uh, made sure we are ready and prepared to implement this policy. Again, I did not receive any questions. Sorry, I've got a couple of questions. Right, I'll just Mr. lay it out. Mr. I've got questions on a couple of the policies. No problem. Mr. Jankowski. Um, so on page one, under guidelines, uh, records information regarding students who have been adjudicated delinquent, the first line, it, it says, and I, I understand that these, these, some of these are, are existing, but um, it says the building principal or designee shall receive from the court um, the information. Wouldn't that be better sent to the administration and, and, then, that, uh, and then the principal informed? It seems odd that it would just be the building principal that receives this information from the court. I, I can check on that, but I'm I, I, pretty I sure it comes I, out of school code. It comes code. straight out of the school. Really? School. Yes. Really is, yeah. Under, yeah. I'll, I'll call the PSBA then. Yeah. No, I just, it <laughs> seems odd. It, it would seem like for something of this, it, it would be the, the administration or the superintendent that receives it and then gives it, but. It, it, that may make sense. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, m just if I can interject, this policy actually uh, puts in writing what has been existing law. It's now yeah. it's being set in policy more for the administrations to know what to expect and for it, it, so that, that it's on record. So on page two at the bottom, regarding the transfer of records, and this is more a question too. So, so when it talks about transferring to the school district, it says from another school district, 
a non-public school or another school within the district. The, the district shall request a certified copy of the, the record. Um, and then the same when it transferred, you know, and then transfer from the district. It seems odd that it, it one of the one of the transfer locations is from another school within the district. I mean, is there do we really would 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 you know the different schools within our district be expected to make a certified request for records of a student that's already within our district? It it just again it, it and I understand if it's coming from the PSBA. It just it seems odd um, that it, again it goes back to well, what wouldn't that information be within the administration already? Why would it, why would, you know, for example, Shoemaker need to make a certified request of, of Willow, Wayne? We, yeah, we can, we can look at that. I, I don't think that's, uh, we'll, we'll look into it with a little bit more detail. Um, I can tell you from transferring without, we have a kind of very clear process and we have, we refined it and, um, you know, we re reviewed everything to make sure that it was up to date. I can look at that just for clarification. I think some of this language comes from the school code. It's not PSBA's language, oh, it's yeah. the school code. Um, and so PSBA, you know, um, suggests that we always follow the school code specifically. I don't know if, if Mr. It, should, it just maybe because I wouldn't want us to not follow our own code or our own policy when it says that you have to request a certified copy mm -hmm. for a transfer from another school within the district. Yeah. And that's what, you know, it, it talks about non-public. I mean, and, and again, if it's if it's a charter, if it's another school, that makes sense. But it it, oh, it may see. because if it's coming from the school code, He's right. you know, f yeah. at the yeah. time when that when that when when the, the the law was was written, you know, there might not have been charter schools or cyber schools. So it just seems like it might serve us well to clarify that it's not a school. Uh, within the community of schools in our district um, so that we're not, again, so we're not not following our own policy. We'll, we'll definitely review that. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Any additional questions on 216.1? Okay, Dr. Pogolaitis. Okay, uh, 251, students experiencing homelessness, foster care, and other educational instability. This, we recently reviewed this policy. The only revision to this policy affects the students with disability section at the end. Um, it just specifically states students experiencing educational instability who have an IEP shall maintain the right to special education, the right to graduate either through attainment of credits through the completion of the goals established in their IEP in accordance with applicable law, regulations, board policy, administrative regulations, and state guidance. So that language was uh, needed to be updated, and, and so that's the only change to this policy. Okay. So my last two questions right. <laughs> on the policies. So under the definitions on page um, three going into four about homeless children and youths, um, section 1B, I just find this, uh, it's an interesting uh, list of, it's, it says living in motels, hotels, trailer parks, or camping grounds. I understand motels, hotels, and camping grounds, but trailer parks seems a little like not act. I mean, we have trailer parks within our school district where people own or lease homes. I, I wouldn't want there to be a stigma for one of our, one of our students um, falling under the definition of homeless because they live in a, a mobile home within a trailer park. We can definitely look at that language to see if we can strike some of that. So that's something we can look at. And then later on on page four, under delegation of responsibility, this is just a question. So it says the board designates the home and school visitor and director of student services. Who or what is a home and school visitor? So home and school visitor is one of our employees who um, it, uh, she visits homes um, to check on any. So we do have that. I, I should make, so so we do have that up his up, up individual who does have that position. That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all I have. Okay. Thank I you. Ju I just had one comment sure. Ms. Ford. in reference to what Jeff was saying. Um, I read the same thing about the, the trailer park, and I was just wondering if you could, if a suggestion for a better word would be modular home, because there's such a negative connotation attached to that word. Okay. Well, my question was not, was I, that I all together? That, just yeah. my thought, though. My thought. Like, if if that was going to remain, that it might be considered 
modular home instead of trailer. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Yeah, and I'll jump in, and um, this might save a little bit of time for some folks. Um, this is probably coming right out of the McKinney-Vento definition of homeless, which is a, uh, an act that was, it's a federal act from 1987, where it's um, with a, there's a definition of um, homelessness and what it, what it entails. And in that act, um, it, it does state that exact verbiage um, and I believe that's probably where that came from. So that's probably what, what, what we're looking at there. Thank you for that, Mr. Smith. We will still review that just to see if that's something we can talk with PSBA's team to see if we can modify that language. Okay, very good. Any further questions or comments on this? Okay. Uh, next policy. Okay, 815, acceptable use of internet, computers, and network resources. Um, policy 815 was reviewed based on updates issued earlier this year related to data governance and security and breach notification for computerized personal information. Um, some of the revisions to this policy include definition for computer to provide clarity in policy terminology, updates to the list of options that boards may establish as inappropriate matter based on court decisions and to clarify terminology that may be overly broad or vague, um, clarification that technology protection measures may be adjusted in appropriate circumstances outlined in, outlined in policy, and there was additional terminology and policy references to address encryption and security procedures. It's just a general overview. Okay, are there any, any questions, questions or comments? comments? Jankowski. I lied. I do have one more, but this isn't regarding the language of, of this. It just and I should know this, and I was looking for it, and I couldn't find it. So, so at the end of this, we do have in here. Um, vandalism, um, and, and obviously this is is focused on technological vandalism. Do we have a policy for or? or is it captured in the student code of conduct for vandalism of of the actual hard hardware, the physical assets? Not okay. That's I thought so. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, this will be the last one. Okay, and then policy 819, suicide awareness, prevention, and response. Uh, PSBA is considering this a new policy due to significant formatting changes, although this uh, is an existing policy. Um, so it's really just looking at it for new for formatting and bold and strike through. So there'd be so many changes just because of movement of paragraphs and language. Um, so that's why we're calling it new um, for reading purposes. So policy 819 was revised to address the correlation between the threat assessment teams and our crisis response intervention teams when addressing suicide prevention and response. This policy was also updated to reflect current terminology and resources. Some of the revision, revisions to the policy include the definition section, which was significantly expanded to promote consistency and understanding of terminology used throughout the policy. A delegation of responsibility section was added to the policy to address responsibility for the development of administrative regulations, which are in place. Incorporation of school safety and security training and a safe to say something program uh, by reference of policy 805 emergency preparedness and response, which is within the policy. Updates to sections of the policy related to methods of prevention, methods of assessment, intervention, methods of response to suicide attempt or suicide to provide clarification and collaboration between the threat assessment teams and the crisis response and intervention teams, and then expanded and updated links to suicide awareness, prevention, and crisis resources. Uh, so there are all the updates um, to policy 819. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? Dr. Whitney? Yeah. So just a couple quick things that jumped out at me on page four, uh, the methods of prevention section. Um, third paragraph, uh, information received in confidence from a student may be revealed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that one jumped out as just being a little vague to me in the sense that um, you know we're talking about revealing confidential student information. I completely understand the sentiment behind the statement, but it doesn't specify sort of what information, who would reveal confidential information, to whom this confidential information would have been uh, disclosed, et cetera, et cetera. So it just, it feels a little fuzzy to me, and I don't know if there's a need or, uh, you know, to comply with any 
confidentiality policies we might have um, and need to tighten up that language at all? We can definitely look at it. I know that this is definitely coming directly from the school code. Um, and so we, we can look at that for sure, um, just to make sure that we have the best terminology and language. So we'll look at that as okay. a team and, and work through with PSVA as well. Thanks. And just one other thing, uh, right below that and the suicide prevention coordinators, the district-wide and building level, um, both state that this uh, the person designated may be an existing district employee. Uh, and I'm just curious why that's a may and not a... Uh, will or I mean wh who would not be a district employee and would be in that role that's a great question we'll look at that um, and we'll change it if if we're able to do that thank you sure thanks so. okay thank you for that additional comments well, I'll just make a general comment that uh, you know I'm, I'm glad that we have a policy in place to, to cover this particular issue and it seems very detailed very well thought out uh, if there are no further comments on the first reading, uh, we'll move these to second reading for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kovalaitis. Okay, next item on the agenda, other ed educational entities. Uh, Dr. Whitney, do you have a report for the CLIU? Yes, I do. Uh, this was based on the CLIU Board of Directors meeting, took place on December 18th, <clears throat> final meeting of the calendar year. Uh, relatively light agenda, just a couple things uh, of note. Uh, we had a presentation on the uh, Lifehouse program that the CLIU operates. It's one of the uh, sort of work-based placement training programs. Um, uh, we received some Christmas ornaments made by the students in that program, which was lovely. Um, Couple of the business items, uh, we did do final approval of the 24-25 general operating budget, which will appear on our agenda in a meeting to come soon for approval. Um, again, as I mentioned last time, it's no overall increase in the contribution from districts to that operating budget. Uh, there will be a very small increase from the East Penn, but it's still, it's relatively minor. Um, we uh, approved, uh, it's an annual request to approve a committed fund balance for capital projects, uh, piecers increases, liability. Um, we approved those numbers. Uh, there was a first reading of a revised policy, um, essentially to cover new governmental accounting standards board um, uh, standards um, for lease agreements. And finally, we got to meet uh, the new CLAU facility dog. Uh, <laughs> Very cute and wonderful, and so Branch, floor is yours. Um, that's it. That's my report. All right. Thank you, Dr. Whitney. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. Um, moving on to a report on the LCTI JOC, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Levinson. The Joint Operating Committee of LCTI met on December 13th. We actually had two meetings, the yearly organization meeting followed immediately by the monthly meeting. Some highlights from the meetings. Uh, first, during the organization meeting, we bid farewell to our outgoing JOC members, including Mr. Champagne and Mr. Bird. We then elected Ms. Carol Fasciano from Parkland as the new chairperson of the JOC and elected Ms. Audrey Matheson from, Al from Allentown as the vice chairperson. Both Ms. Fasciano and Ms. Matheson were elected unanimously. During the monthly meeting, we began by welcoming new members to the JOC, after which we moved on to the administration's report. In the administration's report, we had uh, three main topics of discussion. Uh, the first were um, the restructuring of the various subcommittees on the JOC. Um, there are, are now five subcommittees, um, the Business and Finance Committee, the Facility Committee, and the Public Relations Commi Committee largely remain the same. Uh, we had some restructuring uh, and came up with uh, the Education Committee, which provides general oversight to the educational process. And the School Climate Committee is the fifth uh, and newest committee where um, that committee will be providing general oversight of the Student Services Department. Uh, we also uh, discussed food services um, where the Nutrition Group, which is the same um, a contractor that we use for our food service programs here. The nutrition group was selected as an emergency consultant uh, to run through February of 2024 due, due to an unexpected retirement in uh, LCTI's food services. 
there is a RFP that is currently in process for the remainder of the school year um, beyond uh, February, and that'll take through the rest of 2024. Uh, for anybody who is interested in student services, animal uh, sciences and the emerging health professionals registration window is now open online. Um, and then in some JOC action items, there was uh, no change from November's budget proposal that we, we reviewed in November. It is, it is uh, the same now currently. And just as a, re as a refresher, the, um, we highlighted again the drivers of this year's budget uh, which would be uh, compliance with PDE regulations, uh, reductions in the Perkins funding, increasing of uh, the personnel and the instructional leadership in the health room, and an increased uh, amount of capital funding. And then two more quick items. We have the tentative dates for Camp LCTI will be from June 10th to the 14th, uh, but that is contingent on the snow makeup schedule. If we end up with uh, time in like we have this weekend, we will be just fine. But if we happen to have snow dates, um, then that will cause Camp LCTI to be canceled for this year. We don't have um, any wiggle room on the backside of that uh, that window to to reschedule. So if it's, it's going to be the 10th to the 14th of June, um, with any snow, it'll be canceled. And then the last item I had was that LCTI's very first college fair was held on November 8th. We had 125 students attend, um, and there were seven schools represented, Penn State, Penn Tech, Cedar Crest College, DeSales University, Kutztown University, Empire Beauty School, L Tri C and Northampton Community College. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Any comments or questions for Mr. Smith? Okay, I'll just mention Mr. Champagne would be proud, Mr. Smith. <laughs> uh, next item is item C, appointment of LCTI JOC member. So I'm pleased to report that after some conversations and some mild arm twisting, uh, Mr. Jankowski has agreed to uh, step step up to our, be our fourth member of LCTI JOC. Um, I'd like to uh, put his name forth, and, and uh, I'd like to get a motion for that, please. So moved. Second. Are there any comments or questions or no Thank reservations? It's <laughs> gratitude <laughs> to all of you. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, uh, so, uh, with, with no further comment, uh, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Klotz? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Aye. Ms. Bowman? Aye. Mr. Falegi? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Ms. Allen, and thank you, Mr. Jankowski, for, for, for stepping up. We'll have a full contingent with myself, Mr. Smith, Mr. Falegi, and Mr. Jankowski. Um, Okay, there are no other items, uh, so moving on to announcements. We did have an executive session this evening where we discussed confidential matters and personnel. Uh, the school district will be closed on Monday, June, January 15th. Uh, our next regular board meeting will be two weeks from today on Monday, January 22nd at 7.30 here in this room. Uh, with no further business before the board, uh, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any knows? Thank you and uh, be safe. <laughs>